Hello and welcome to 5-Minute Math. Today we are looking at the Algebra 1 concept of interpreting exponential functions. This is standard A.9b in the great state of Texas. We are using item number 27 of the 2023 released star test. If you haven't done so already, please go ahead and take a moment to pause the video, work this problem out on your own, unpause it, and we will look at our answers together. So we've got a function given to us here, and it can be used to estimate, and we've got this real world situation. So we're looking for that 1.029, right? So they're gonna give us this right here, and they're just wondering, what does this really represent? Well, here's the interesting thing. If you look at your reference materials, you are gonna find not a single thing about exponential functions. So you do have assistance with quadratics, you do have assistance with linear equations, but not so much with exponential functions. So let's back up a little bit, make sure we kind of level set on what an exponential function looks like. So typically what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna use this as our, just our, our standard form if you wanna call it like that, y equals a times b to the x, okay? Now in this case, right, this y is being represented by wt, right? This x is being represented by that t, but we'll, we'll riff off of this for a moment here, okay? So our a is always going to be uh, something close to our initial amount, starting amount. If you were dealing with uh, money and investment, it's gonna be your principal, right? It's the amount of money that's invested and you're gonna get interest on it. So you're always going to start right here with this, you know, initial amount. So it could be um, if you're investing $500 and you get a, you know, compounded uh, interest rate of maybe 7% annually, right? Well, then you would have that A would be that initial amount that was invested. Now this B, right, that is going to be our growth rate. If it's increasing, Right? It could also be a decay rate if it's decreasing. So sometimes we're going to exponentially increase. Sometimes we're going to exponentially decrease. Right? It just kind of depends on whether it's you know, uh, greater than 1 or whether it's less than 1. And so that would be like the interest rate if you're dealing with money. And then finally we have this, you know, this x up here. Right? We've got our y, but then we finally have this x. It's in that exponential location. Okay, so this is typically going to be our multiplication factor or our, in most real world situations, it's going to be our time unit. So it could be months, could be weeks, could be years, right? So let's apply that to this situation, right? So we've got our W is being replaced by our WT, and that's fine. So that just means that uh, we are calling out the fact that this is a function because we've got it in that function form and it's a function of t function w right and we're taking the the function w of t now this a right there it's that 270 All right so that 270 is going to be your uh, initial amount in this case whales right so we are uh, initially starting with 270 wells. Now, we've got this 1.029, okay, that's your growth factor, right? So really, what we're dealing with is, since it's gonna be greater than one, it is a growth rate, right? And really, we're gonna kinda separate this one with the zero, the 0.029, Right, so that's going to be a 2.9% growth factor because this 2.9% translates into the 0 0.29, and we just need that 1.029 to make sure we're going above 1 to include the initial amount and then the 2.9% above that. And then this t right here is our time unit, right? So t years. And so that 1.029 that we're looking for, well, we've got that growth rate, or we could go ahead and call it the growth factor of the number of whales, so that is going to be our answer, D.